Hi everyone, my name is Adriana Smallwood. I'm a dietitian in uh, Newfoundland. I have celiac myself, so it's a, it's a great topic for me. I love talking about it. My strengths are talking about celiac. However, my weakness is um, live Facebook groups. So last night, if you were tuning in, I accidentally did a live um, feed into the wrong group. So here we are again, take two. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, I'm not so good at multitasking, so I'll finish a thought and I'll always answer your question. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. Um, tonight our topic is going to be um, fertility and celiac disease. So when I talk about fertility issues, um, it's anybody who hasn't been able to conceive naturally uh, within a year span. So once you get past the year mark, the doctors will usually start talking about different uh, measures that you can take. Also, going forward, all the things I'll be talking about are really in relation to people who have celiac but haven't been diagnosed yet. So, for those of you who have been diagnosed with celiac, great to see you too. Um, then, as long as you're following a gluten-free diet, your fertility issues, you don't have any um, in relation to the general population. You don't have any increased chance in comparison. Um, so... Um, I'm following my notes here just to make sure I don't forget anything. So when we talk about fertility issues in relation to undiagnosed celiac disease, there seems to be consensus that uh, women who have un, um, unexplained fertility, so that means that if your doctor hasn't found any kind of structural issue within your um, reproductive system, so it's unexplained, uh, or if you have recurrent miscarriages, or uh, interuterine growth restriction. These are the three things, um, the three topics that it seems that you have an increased chance of maybe having undiagnosed celiac, so you should definitely get um, screened for that. So there is research to show too that women with untreated celiac disease have decreased reproductive um, like time span. So what this means is there is there's research to show that women who have undiagnosed celiac start their start menstruating later in life. So I don't mean later in life, you know, 25, but most women start their start to menstruate around 14. So you might start around 16 or 18. So you're starting later. And then there's research to show that women with undiagnosed celiac also um, start menopause sooner um, than average. So the years that you're fertile are less. Now the good news is that all of these um, issues with your fertility uh, can, you know, be fixed by following a gluten-free diet. So once you start uh, nutrition counseling and start your gluten-free diet and find out all the things that gluten is part of and start avoiding all of it and go on that full gluten-free diet, uh, you will your chances return to uh, normal, like the normal population. So you're no longer at risk for having fertility issues. Hi, Amanda. Thanks for joining us from London. Um, so that being said, uh, it's very important to follow a gluten-free diet. Now, just because you are diagnosed with celiac uh, doesn't mean you're in the clear if you're not following a gluten-free diet. So if you have been diagnosed already, and you're having fertility issues, maybe you are, you know, uh, getting gluten from an outside source that you're not aware of. There's some cross-contamination happening there. Or it might very well be that the fertility issue is coming from somewhere else. So it might not always be the gluten. Now, um, once your fertility issues have kind of fixed themselves, uh, if you do get pregnant, um, it doesn't stop there. So women who consume gluten during pregnancy also run the risk of having a preterm baby or a low birth weight baby. So it's very important um, to consume a gluten-free diet even um, after you've gotten pregnant. Hi Bonita from Newfoundland. Um, so uh, you know if you have been diagnosed with celiac, you've been gluten-free for years, you haven't had any issues getting pregnant and you know I know that Pregnancy cravings can be insane, but that doesn't mean that you should be consuming uh, gluten if you have like a craving or something. So it's very important to stay gluten-free throughout your entire pregnancy 
and to make sure that you're healthy as possible. Um, you know, if you're afraid of cross contamination, it's important to follow up with your registered dietitian if you're following one, uh, if you have one following your case. Uh, if you haven't spoken with a registered dietitian, then perhaps you should talk to your gastroenterologist. They usually have a very good relationship with the GI dietitian. And it's very important to talk to a dietitian like myself who specializes in celiac disease because just like a general practitioner um, and a specialist, um, there's doctors who specialize in certain things. The general practitioner knows a little about a lot, so they might not be able to help you with all the nitty-gritty little things. Um, with celiac, like a specialized dietitian uh, would be able to do. So, um, you know, once you're diagnosed, go talk to a dietitian. Uh, if your gastroenterologist can't point you in the right direction, Dietitians of Canada, uh, dietitians.ca, also has a find a dietitian um, section where you can go in and read the profiles of dietitians from all over Canada to see if one is in your area. And they'll say underneath their specializations, you know, if they deal with diabetes, if they deal with, you know, uh, celiac disease. So it's a great way to find a dietitian if you're looking for one. Um, so these are the important things I'm going to review. So if you found, um, you know, if you're listening in and you think you might have celiac disease, you haven't been diagnosed yet, but you're having some fertility issues. Um, if it's unexplained fertility, so there's no rhyme or reason, they haven't been able to figure out why you haven't been able to conceive, um, or if you're having miscarriages, you're not quite sure why, or if you're ha or if you know you've gotten pregnant, you've had in interuterine uh, growth restriction, then it is possible that um, you have celiac disease previously undiagnosed. Um, you know, a lot of people say, "Well, I'm not getting any symptoms." Um, as the theme of this month uh, is, you know, they're the lesser known symptoms. And some people think, uh, some doctors and, and whatnot, think that uh, the fertility issues could be the first sign that you are having issues and perhaps the gastro, the gastro symptoms haven't happened yet. And maybe you have um, celiac and you're never going to get the gastro symptoms. So this is the only, um, you know, this is the only spotlight showing you that this could be an issue. Um, so like I said, once you go on a gluten-free diet, then your chances of getting pregnant are just like everybody else's, uh, or your chances of being infertile are just like anybody else's, but hopefully it's the latter, um, and you are lucky in conceiving, but you wanna make sure that you have a healthy pregnancy, like I said, and avoid the gluten all the way through. So, why is this an issue? Why does you know consuming gluten potentially cause infertility in celiac disease? Um, they, they're not really sure right now, but there's two schools of thought. The first one is um, malnutrition. So if, you're, if you've read the little blurb on the site, uh, on the celiac site, uh, celiac.ca, uh, you'll see that selenium and folic acid, um, which is the big one, you know, every woman is told once they reach reproductive years that they should take folic acid just in case they get pregnant. Um, so selenium, folic acid, and zinc are three important nutrients when it uh, comes to reproductive health. And these are also three nutrients that aren't well absorbed and tend to be low um, when you are... Uh, having fertility issues, uh, sorry, when you um, are at the, at the beginning stages of celiac disease. And if you haven't, you know, had that much experience that with celiac disease, um, you'll know that, uh, you won't know, sorry, that the biggest issue with celiac disease in the very beginning when you, um, when you're first diagnosed is that your gut is not absorbing nutrients the way it should. So one of the things that might happen um, if you've been, if you watched the live feeds yesterday, is you're not absorbing iron well, and that's a big issue. But for fertility issues, it's the selenium, the zinc, and the folic acid. So uh, once you start supplementing with this, and once your gut starts to heal, then your chances of fertility improve. So you know, on the positive note, and I mentioned this last night, um, can lack of menstruation be a result of celiac as well? have had other testing done and no reason found as to why except for potentially a result of low iron. Um, 
when uh, you don't have regular periods, that is um, that is a sign of undiagnosed celiac. But I mean, if you've been following the diet for a while and and your gut is healed, then that shouldn't be an issue anymore. But when your iron gets so low, uh, your body kind of tries to conserve all of the iron that it can. And when you have menstruation, you're losing pure iron. So that can be a result. Once your iron starts to increase, you should find that your cycle is regulating. Um, so that should, uh, you know, check with your doctor about that. Once your iron starts to come up, that should regulate itself. Uh, another reason that some women don't have, uh, their period is that they have very low body fat. So if you are, you know, like a 90 pound, uh, small little thing and you don't have enough body fat, that might be another issue. So, uh, it could be a couple of different things, um, there, um, the other school of thought, besides the malnutrition um, and the, the lack of absorption, is that the infertility could come from an autoimmune response, and that just means that everything's so inflamed and your immune, your immune system is so on overdrive that it's messing with your fertility. So those are the two, you know, they don't, they don't really know the, the real reason behind it quite yet, but those are the two big things that explain, um, explain what's happening the best. Now, um, I was seven or eight years trying to get my diagnosis. So I was consuming gluten for seven or eight years before I found out that I was celiac. So that's like seven or eight years of damage. Um, I've been gluten free for five or six years now. So, um, and all of my results are coming back great. Um, so I actually just had a baby. So my baby is five months old. So there is definitely a hundred percent hope, um, you know, just because you've had celiac for a long time or you know, you've know you had fertility issues in the past and then you find out that you do have celiac, as long as you go on a gluten-free diet, you're following it, you're healthy, um, you make sure that you're not getting any kind of cross-contamination, then there's, there's definitely hope that you can have a little baby and carry it full term. My baby was 41 weeks, um, he did not want to come out, and he was seven pounds, so he was a nice, healthy baby, full term. Um, so you know, it's, it's important to look at all your options, um, and if there is some unexplained fertility happening there, then, um, then you want to check with your doctor and get screened for celiac, because there's definitely enough research to show that that could be the issue. Okay, Amanda, so you're just starting the diet. So once you go gluten-free and the healing starts to happen and you get your iron up and those other nutrients, then, you know, you should start menstruating pretty regularly. Are there doctors you recommend working with in the Toronto area? I'm not really familiar with the doctors in Ontario, Jessica, but that's not to say I can't find out and get back to you. And for anybody that's going to be watching live, because this uh, video will be on the website now for like here on out, I will watch the comments for the next 24 hours and try to answer anything um, that comes up um, during watching it later, because I know it can be early in some other provinces and you might not be watching this yet. So I can get back to you about a doctor or someone at the Celiac Association definitely can. You're quite welcome. Um, so like I said, I'm going to bring it all together again just because I like, um, Amanda, make sure you get tested for select disease and be sure you want to know if you have a long-term condition. Um, yes, thank you for pointing that out, uh, the CCA there. Um, just because you have fertility issues does not necessarily mean that it is celiac. So absolutely don't start eating gluten-free until you get tested because if you are gluten-free, and you get the blood test, you can all you could come up with a false negative. So it's ex extremely important to get the test before you start eating gluten free. Um, just you know, you want to make sure that it is celiac because if you do have celiac, you need to be followed by a gastroenterologist and a dietitian for the rest of your life just to make sure that you're getting all the proper nutrients and that your gut is staying healed and it's not you're not getting any flare ups or anything like that. Um, so you want to make sure that you definitely have celiac before you start eating gluten-free. Um, and, uh, yeah, so hopefully this was helpful. Um, and for all of you out there who have infertility issues, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, it can get better. Uh, you definitely, there's hope. Just make sure that you're staying healthy and you're looking at all your options and you don't want to stress.
Thank you so much.